I felt like I had the background of not only hiring lawyers, but understanding what law firms want and need and expect when they're not only hiring lawyers, but when they're working with legal recruiters. Welcome to the You Are Lawyer podcast, Jody Zaringa. How are you today? I'm great, Paola. Thank you so much. How are you? Yeah, I am doing well. Uh, busy, busy week, but I'm excited to get this content out there because you are a legal recruiter. You actually own your own business, Zaringa Consulting. And so let's jump right in. What made you create this consulting company? So it's an interesting, interesting path I've had. Um, I originally thought I wanted to go to law school, but wasn't quite sure after college if I was ready to really do have that commitment. So I started working for a law firm, went to paralegal school at night in the process of that. I was ended up getting hired by that law firm as their director of recruiting. Honestly, I didn't even know, I didn't even know what it was. I was like, what, what is this? But I started doing that for an AMLA 100 firm in 1995. I took the firm from 185 lawyers. By the time I left in 2003, we were at 525 lawyers. So in that process, I had to rely a lot on legal recruiters to help me identify talent and, and, and bring me good folks. So I just realized, I was like, I, you know, I can do this. I know I can do this. So it was 20 years in June and it's been great. It's been wonderful. So yeah. So what made you decide to leave the law firm or working at formal firms to create your own little thing? Or are you a consultant within the bigger law firm? So I am an independent company. My clients are law firms and companies that hire me to find them lawyers. So just working with outside recruiters to help me fill these tough positions that I had, I realized that, I, that there was a, a need out there for good legal recruiters that understood how the inner workings of a law firm work, because it works completely different than in a business. So I felt like I had the background of not only hiring lawyers, but understanding what law firms want and need and expect when they're not only hiring lawyers, but when they're working with legal recruiters. So I, I worked with a handful of, of great legal recruiters who were who mentored me the first few years to, to, to help me get started. And it's been a great path. But yes, I do consult for uh, law firms and companies if they need me on a particular project or maybe they want to um, you know, start a new practice area or get into a new market or open up an office in another state or whatever. So I just help them in any way that they need, really. I was going to say, I love that because I worked in a similar type role where I considered myself to be an internal consultant because okay. my law firm, it was a hundred year old firm, but they were creating a brand new practice area. And right. so they didn't know what they didn't know, right? You had mm -hmm. to do everything from right job descriptions to hiring to continual education of everybody. And it was actually a team of paralegals. So they were like, we know we have paralegals, but they typically bill their hours and do all this. We want this to be separate. And to your point, hiring for a law firm is completely different than your regular job or you put up a job description, yes. right? Because for one, lawyers are very different. Yes, they <laughs> so are. Yeah, there would be some lawyers who are just like, I can train them everything else. I need a good personality and then I can mold them from there. And then there's some lawyers who are like, no, the grades rule. I need someone mm -hmm. who clerked. I need someone who was in the top 2% of their class. I need all of that. So absolutely. You're right. There's a lot of nuances that it comes with, you know, hiring lawyers in, in that whole industry. It's just completely different. So Jody, when a law firm or a company hires you and they say, hey, we're looking for someone, do they give you all of the nuanced details of what they're looking for? Or do they say, you know, we trust you, go out and use your own process? That's a great question. So yes, when the when my clients come to me, they do give me specific details of, of what they're looking for. And I really take that information and process it with them to make sure that I understand what they need. And it's interesting from my perspective too, because sometimes the clients will say, you know, we want a you know, third year real estate leasing associate and we'll go into, well, what are they going to be doing day to day? What, what, you know, what's their day going to look like? Who are they going to be reporting to? And after going through that exercise with them, the job description changes. 
while I'm talking to them because they're like, oh, you know what? We really didn't think about this or I really didn't think about that. So yes, to answer your question, yes. So when my team calls and does an outreach, it's very specific to the client. We don't do, you know, just cold outreach to anyone. It's, it's, it's very client driven. Yeah. And so there are a lot of law students that listen to the podcast. So I want to explain a little bit yeah. about what you said. So third year leasing or real estate student or um, okay. lawyer, that's what they're looking for. So many layers here. <laughs> third year would be someone who's been practicing for three years. And that can be different. It can be literally three years, someone who's been out of law school for three years or someone who's had mm -hmm. three years of experience in real estate or in leasing. Right. right. So there's levels yes. there. And then yeah. within the real estate law, you know, it can be real estate with mergers and acquisitions. It can be real estate with corporate leases. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's not just a blanket job description. Hey, looking for someone to fill this seat. <laughs> right. No. Yes. It's very specific. That's a very, that's a very good point. And speaking to the law school students, I think that a lot of times they worry about getting pigeonholed first you know, their first job and they really want to practice real estate, but they can't find a real estate job because the real estate market is down, which happens and it happens with everything. It happens with corporate, whatever. And then they get themselves into a practice area and they want to make that change. So to your point, you could be a fifth year practicing attorney, but have changed practice groups after your second year. So you're, while you're a fifth year lawyer, you're a third year real estate lawyer. Does that make sense? To me, of course. <laughs> yes. Yes. I'm sure that the audience will get it. And then there's a lot of young lawyers that listen to the podcast. So five years practicing or less. And they would okay. set your example perfectly. We did not prepare that, everyone. <laughs> that was just <laughs> not at all. magic. No. Yeah. That's <laughs> because great. Though. A lot of lawyers are afraid to move around or mm -hmm. they move every year, right? It's right. like those two extremes because I stayed at my law firm for five years but I was in mm -hmm. IP law and then I did some e-commerce and then I did counterfeit all within the same practice group, but very different things. So, you know, you right. would have that tenure. However, you've moved around within the departments. And so you've seen a lot of other stuff. So right. what we're trying to say to the audience is that you can move around. However, mm -hmm. when you're reading those job descriptions, or if you're thinking about reaching out to a recruiter, make sure you're asking these questions so that you're actually meeting the criteria. Mm -hmm. And if you're working with a good recruiter, like, like us, we really will, you know, dig deep into your experience as well um, to, to find out exactly, you know, if you are a fit and if you're not a fit, then maybe we have something else. But yes, that's, that's our job as well. So okay? Jody, so sure. let's switch things up and talk a little bit about tips for someone who's interviewing or someone who wants a job with one of your clients. What do you do to kind of help them get prepared? Do you have any advice? The thing I'll say is the most important thing that you can do when you go on an interview is to be prepared. And, and it helps if you have a legal recruiter on this part because they should know everything in the, the ins and outs of the position. They should know everything. So you, you can rely on that legal recruiter to, to answer these questions. But if you're not using a legal recruiter, research the practice group, research the people in the practice group, get your schedule ahead of time from whoever you're working with, research those people that you're going to be meeting with. Maybe do you have anything in common with those folks? Did you go to the same law school? Did you do the same hobbies? Um, did they happen to write an article that you saw published recently that interests you? Anything, anything at all, just be prepared for knowing the firm, the practice group, and the people that you're interviewing for is super important. So that's like, what I like to call pre-interview prep, just to be prepared. And then of course there's the tactical things. Um, I always tell the candidates to, if it's, if it's an in-person interview, make sure you map out in advance where you have to go and allow yourself time for traffic and, you know, plan to arrive 10 minutes early. Um, make sure you look at your wardrobe ahead of time and not, you don't need the fanciest expensive clothes at all. You really don't. You just need to look put together and clothes need to fit properly. Like, I can't tell you, like you could go to Target or Walmart and get the prettiest black dress that is just perfect. Take it to an alterations and get it fit perfectly to your body. It's amazing what a difference that makes. Just your first impression, I always say it makes the biggest difference. It really does. So, you know, take the time to prepare that ahead of time. Like don't scramble the night before 
and make sure the questions that you have, make sure they're answered before you go in and don't be afraid to ask them. And if you are using a legal recruiter, like I said, lean on that legal recruiter. That's our job. And we're here to help you. We're kind of like an intermediary. If I find somebody, you know, a you know, second year lawyer who is on the fence about looking and they're a great fit, you know, I'll tell them, go interview for the job. You know, it's okay. If you're at all interested, just, just go check it out. You may interview for that job and you may realize that you're in the best place you could possibly be. And that's awesome. But it's a gut check. And I think it's a very healthy exercise to go through as a young attorney as well, because the worst case scenario that I have run into is, let's say, a seventh, eighth year associate who is looking at, oh, gosh, you know, it's time for me to make partner and I don't have a book of business. And then what do you do? You've never interviewed. It just becomes this. It's stressful. I hope I answered your question. (laughs) I do believe that you did answer it. What I kept hearing was take the chance, just go on the interview. And I want to say it's always easier said than done, right? Uh, Yes. Lawyers are risk adverse. And we're like, if there's no guarantee that I'm getting it, why waste my time? And I don't mean just go on the interview for the sake of interviews. I don't. You have to be interested in the job. I mean, if it's a, if it's an interesting opportunity and you're on the fence and it looks like it could be a good role for you, you know, then I say it's worth the time. But don't don't just go on interviews because somebody asks you to go on an interview. If you're not interested, we don't want you to waste your time and the clients don't want to waste their time either. And that's OK. It's totally OK to say no. Absolutely. And. I hope everyone is learning a lot from Jody because on this podcast, every single week, I talk to a lawyer who's doing something cool with their degree, right? Because you can never lose all the information that you learned in law school. I don't care if you're running right. a food truck. I don't care if you became a painter. I don't care if you're a novelist. You're still using your legal education. So there's a ton of things that you can do, right? You've been using it this way for so long, and now you're interested in something else, or you want to pivot, or you want to go to a smaller firm or whatever, you need to hire a legal recruiter because they know all of the nuances and they can see your blind spots. You might Mm -hmm. be thinking, I want another $25,000 and less hours. Meanwhile, your recruiter will tell you, that's not, that doesn't work Mm -hmm. in your practice group. (laughs) (laughs) Or you're thinking too small or whatever, right? Exactly, Um, you're exactly right. So Jody, I wanna talk about your business because I I think business owners are so fascinating. You oh, actually you. own Zarega Consulting and you guys have an app, which is called the Attorney Jobs app, where you can find jobs right on your phone. What made right. you guys create that? I'm so glad you asked that question. And I really hope that everybody listening will take a look at it. The inspiration behind the app was because I, I you know, having been doing this for so long, I realized that there was no one place where attorneys could go look for positions. And, you know, you could go to Monster, you could go to LinkedIn, or you could go to Indeed, or you have all of these job, you know, sites, all these websites, you can search in attorney jobs, if you're going to, you know, or legal counsels or whatever you want to do, but you're going to get secretaries, and you're going to get paralegal positions, you're, they're all going to pop up, because that's just the way that the search engines work. So there wasn't one, like a one stop place for attorneys, and also understanding how valuable attorneys time is, you know, our our sort of mantra is you can find your perfect job in under six minutes. So this app is exclusively for attorneys. You cannot download it unless you are in good standing um, with the bar association. However, if you are in law school, we will let you in with an EDU email address, Um, just knowing that you're in law school because looking for jobs, it's it's important for for the law school students as well. So we do allow law school students to, to download it. And so once you download it, you can set up a profile and in that profile you can set your preferences like you can search for any sort of job if you want to go to salt lake city and be a cannabis lawyer let's say you can search in those fields to see if there's any positions open but you can also set your profile at any time any of these jobs are posted you can get notified so Another thing that's really cool about it that I feel like is important to mention is when you're a lawyer looking for a job, there's that confidentiality piece. Like you said, their attorneys are risk adverse. And, you know, if I were an attorney, I would, I would be so scared to throw my resume on some LinkedIn 
job, you know, who knows, you know, or that I'm hiring or I'm looking for a job on the LinkedIn that if my managing partner saw that I would be terrified. So the good thing about this app too, is when you download it, you're only working with Zerida consulting. That's it. So your resume does not go into cyberspace. It comes to us and it's a very personalized approach and the jobs are uploaded. We try to do it every day, but at least twice a week. And um, you can decide if you want more information about an opportunity. You can, you know, just push a button and we'll call you and talk to you about that position. Or you can upload your resume and, and, and you don't have to upload your resume, but you can upload your resume and say, I want to apply for this job. But we'll still call you um, because we want you to make sure that you understand the position that you're looking for and what law firm you know, you're looking at. So. I was going to say what I like about the process is that it sounds like every step you're making sure the candidate is intentional. I'm yes. intentionally giving you my stuff. I'm intentionally talking to a recruiter. I'm not just, oh, look, new job, click here, right? And they're just like, oh, I had a rough day at work. Let me apply. No, it sounds like to be using the attorney jobs app, you have to be intentional. You're putting in your borrow number. <laughs> you're putting in all this information to say, yes. I am committed to working with you to find another role. Yes. Yes, yes. And and we we understand what a big deal that is. And so we take it very, very seriously. And we are kind of like your concierge, really. And again, that doesn't mean that you have to interview for any of the jobs, but you can just see what's out there. And maybe you want to move home, you know, where home is. You know, let's let me see what jobs are in Columbus right now. You can do a search and that way. So it's a really cool tool. Mm -hmm. It looks really nice. And I love that it's a discreet way to look for jobs. So that's really nice. Yes. Um, yes. So you mentioned moving home or moving to Salt Lake City and all this stuff. Do you serve clients nationwide? We do. We do. Play. Our placements are nationwide and, and in Canada. We do some, some work in Canada as well. But um, yes, so I'm physically located in Florida. We have a team uh, where there's 10 of us right now. Um, we all happen to be women, which diverse group of women, which actually didn't even happen on purpose. It happened organically, which is really cool. We're located all over the country and our reach is very, very broad. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. So Jody, I ask everyone this question and that is, what would you say to new lawyers or law students about how to find a legal job? The first thing that you should do is pick up the phone and, and call me. It's super simple. <laughs> you call me, you email me, you download the app um, and see what's out there. And, and, and I can help you walk through the process. I can help you. Sometimes, you know, we're part psychologists too, you know, like in really helping the attorney figure out where they want to go and what they want to do. So definitely rely on us. We can help you. And then communicate. I think communicating with your recruiter and being honest and transparent about what you want is very important as well. Don't ghost your recruiter. That's happened <laughs> to us sometimes. I'm like, oh, you know. Um, but yeah, that's the that's that's the thing I would I would really say is 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 really put that trust into into your recruiter to help you guide you through the process because it can be difficult. Okay, and I really love that because. Lawyers, especially someone that's coming right out of law school, you've been watching and being mentored and learning for the last three years. Mm -hmm. And so while you may understand the law, you don't know anything about getting a legal job. <laughs> OK, it's a completely different thing. So lean on the people that know. And Zarega Consulting, they've been doing this for 20 years. They have the experience. Contact them, work with the recruiter, and they can walk you through the process or even try to find out what type of practice area might even work best for you. So. Right. Yep. Absolutely. Yes. All right. Great. Well, thank you so much, Kyla, for having me. I really appreciate the opportunity and I love listening to your podcast. I love working with lawyers and I wish you all the best. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day. You too. Bye-bye. <laughs>